Mitochondrial DNA is kind of like the ugly stepsister of DNA testing, only because it's kind of gotten shoved under the rug over the last several years as all the talk about autosomal DNA testing has kind of taken over the world. But mitochondrial DNA can still play a really powerful role in your family history research but you have to be able to understand what the mitochondrial DNA matches are telling you. So that's what we're going to cover today in this segment of Your DNA Guide, the video with Your DNA Guide, Diane Southerd. All right, so let's focus on that mitochondrial DNA. Your mitochondrial DNA traces only that direct maternal line going down this bottom part of your pedigree chart. So when you're thinking about mitochondrial DNA, what you need to be thinking about is that direct maternal line ancestor. Who is that person? Who is that ancestor that falls on that direct maternal line for you? Because the amazing thing is you actually have her mitochondrial DNA. Even if she was born in 1705 or if she was born in 1905, you have her mitochondrial DNA. And that's a pretty amazing thing to think about. So you don't want to neglect other women in your pedigree chart. You can use mitochondrial DNA really to find out about any female in your pedigree chart. The important thing is you have to find the right person to be tested. So for example, if you wanted to find this woman, Miss Swenson, what you'd need to do is find a direct maternal descendant of hers. So this would be her daughter's 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 children. So mitochondrial DNA works because that ancestor, whoever she is, she passes her mitochondrial DNA basically unchanged for generations to all of her children, both males and females, but then only the females will pass it on to the next generation. So everybody has the mitochondrial DNA of their maternal ancestors, but only as ladies will pass it on to the next generation. So what is it about the mitochondrial DNA that makes this amazing, crazy, game-changing technology possible? Well, it's just this and it looks really boring. It's just a table with a list of numbers. But again, when you see this, I want you to remember this list of numbers represents your ancestor. It is a perfect and pure record that's been passed down for generations. And that's a pretty amazing thing to think about. Now your DNA match page at Family Tree DNA where they offer the full sequence DNA test is really what you wanna be focusing on. This match page has a lot of information in it, but really you wanna focus on just one column. This column is called genetic distance. And as I said, when you've taken the full sequence test, you've tested every single possible location on the mitochondrial DNA. And this column is showing you of all of those values, how many are different from this match. You want this number to be zero. Just because of the way mitochondrial DNA is inherited, we really can't allow for any differences. Otherwise, your match is just too distantly related. Of course, there are going to be exceptions. You can have a mutation in any generation, so it's very possible that a mother and child will have a mutation from each other. But in general, most of the time, you won't see mutations. In fact, two people who share the exact same mitochondrial DNA could be sisters, or you could be 20th cousins, and it's really hard to tell the difference. So most of the time, for most of you, you will only care about matches who have zero differences from your mitochondrial DNA profile. One thing to look at when you're watching your mitochondrial DNA matches is for this FF. This FF means your mitochondrial DNA match has also taken an autosomal DNA test at Family Tree DNA. Now remember, autosomal DNA traces both sides of your family and it gives you relationships like second cousin or third cousin. So the combination of the mitochondrial DNA and the autosomal DNA can be very valuable in determining how you're related to someone else. Let me give you an example. So my mother was adopted, and we had a match that was a second cousin on the autosomal DNA test. So remember, a second cousin means that you share great-grandparents. Well, everyone has four great-grandparent couples. So when we're adopted, we don't know which of the four couples of our match is the one that we share. It could be any of them. And so we'd have to really investigate each couple to figure out which one might be the one that's related to us. 
However, with this particular autosomal DNA match, my mom also shared mitochondrial DNA. That means that it's not any one of the four great-grandparent couples, but we have to be related, or rather, it's most likely that we're related on that direct maternal line. So this couple that I have highlighted here in my matches pedigree chart is the same as my mom's couple in that exact same position on her chart. So they share a direct maternal line. This was huge and a really exciting piece of information to discover. So sometimes when you combine the mitochondrial DNA with the autosomal DNA, it can really inform and tell you how you're related to another match on your list. What should you do next with your mitochondrial DNA matches? Well, number one, you wanna check that initial column to see if that genetic distance is zero. If it's not, you pretty much don't need to worry about that match as you'll likely not find your recent common ancestor. And second, check to see if they've had that family finder test taken. That can often give you some insight as to your relationship on that direct maternal line. And always, I wanna hear how it's going. Tell me how you're succeeding with the mitochondrial DNA or what kinds of questions that you have. So leave your comments, I'm interested in your feedback. And until next time, I'm Diane Southerd, your DNA guide.